Okay, so we're back fixing the Spitfire Mark III. It's about a week after it broke down and I had to get uh, towed home. So the gearbox is fixed and back together. Got a Healy coil kit, it's just turned up. So that should let us repair the crankshaft oil seal housing. And if that's successful, and I think it should be, it looks like there's enough metal there to fit insert into, it'll be time to put the, uh, the whole thing back together and we should be back on the road. So let's go on with it. <laughs> Okay, so before we get started, let's have a look at this. Okay, so we've got instructions in it. So yeah, so we have to drill the hole, tap, put our insert onto the insert tool, and then that hammer. Yeah, so oh right. Hit it with a hit it with a steel rod, a special steel rod. Okay. Oh we've got different length things. Right, this drilling the hole is the thing I'm most concerned about going wrong. because we don't want it to be uh, off, uh, off alignment, off the alignment of what it originally was. So, that's so why I'm trying to use the drill press. I don't think, I don't think that's going to work because we've got too much drill to uh, fit in. Nice short drill there. And we can't go too far because there's not that much depth available. So I'll use the depth stop but I'm gonna mark mark the drill too. Our depth going to be. Probably this longest one. So it just screws on the end of this tool. Again.
Okay, so I've got both holes just cleaned out and the correct length 5 eighths, if I remember correctly. The bolt fits in there quite nicely. And we can get it to a similar depth in the other hole. And all the threads are nice and clean. A bit tighter actually. But with the sump and washer, we should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to have a bit of a tidy up here, and then we can get on to changing the seal. Alright, so I've been having a look in the workshop manual to, well I was actually looking to see if there was any special way of removing this seal from the crankshaft oil seal housing and no, the, but the two, the two holes are supposed to be for drifting the seal out okay so we use them, however it's got a section here that talks about if this will focus uh, using a special tool to centralise the housing when we refit it to the back of the engine. Now, this looks to be, from this photo, a sleeve that has the same inner diameter as the crankshaft and same outer diameter as the metal bit of this oil seal housing. However, I'm going to do a bit of um, research and see if there's what the uh, modern um, we don't have all the Churchill tools uh, equivalent is. this, whatever it is, is coming off with the cellulose thinners. So what I'm going to do is uh, put a bit on it, or in it, uh, what I'm going to do is put a bit on the thinners on here and um, wrap it up in tin foil and let it, let it sit. So hopefully that will um, soften up this block. Alright, let's see if that's done anything except for leak through and dissolve my varnish. Annoying. Anyway, maybe not the best of uh, Plans. I think he's done the same job as So it's now the day after, and after soaking this in solvent as I've just shown, I gave it a bit of a soak in water to loosen up the actual gasket, paper gasket material. So there's, probably doesn't show it, there's a tiny bit of a uh, bash there, so the surface is not totally flat. So I'm going to clean that down and then we can check the whole surface for 
flatness because there's no point in putting this back if um, it's just going to leak out the sides again. So yeah, let's get that done. Okay, so I found myself a flat surface. Um, my, I had an old um, granite floor tile that I used for sharpening wood plane blades. I now had a check of the, the flatness, and unfortunately it wasn't wasn't quite as flat as I thought. So I've um, acquired this uh, shelf from a fridge for the time being. So we're just going to use. I have checked this for check this for flatness of the feeler gauge. So we're just going to use um, this is some two two forty grit sandpaper. English, I believe. Uh, I've learned recently that uh, US have a different um, grit spec. And I'm just going to go carefully to remove this burr, and then. We'll check the whole thing. So, it's coloured in. So, I think I'm going to stop there. There is still a little bit low here, but it's not actually... I can get my feeling edge a little way in, as opposed to not. So I think that's sufficient to be taken up by the gasket and I don't want to go too far and uh, take way too much off because I can see I'm starting to hit this which clearly wasn't machined before. Alright, now we can get the new seal pressed in. I'm going to start off with a, a bit of wood which won't get very, very far but then I think I can use the old seal as a, a spacer.
Yep, that feels like we are in. So the seal housing is ready to go. Got all the bolts ready. I've run a die down them. The thread's completely fine. New copper washer for the top most hole. And I'm going to go and run a tap down all the block threads and then we get on to assembling. So I had a comment from someone who used to work on Triumphs when when they were new uh, about greasing this seal lip before it's installed in order to give it some lubrication before the engine oil actually gets there which is I think a very sensible idea so thanks Jeff if you're watching we're doing that when putting it back together so I have just so I have just had a check of parts catalogue so the seals for the screws or set screws for the housing are part 31 which is an HU809 and that translates as 5 sixteenths by 1 1 8 which is what these are so we're good there now all the cleanup is done all the thread cleanup is done so now it's time to get on with this assembly. quite a useful bit unfortunately the film didn't come out very well at all so what I'm doing is using four bits of metal rod scrap bits of brass spare bit of brass I had to shim the crankshaft and the housing so that it's equal on all sides I'll, I'll put a link in that shows a, a photo of what this actually looks like.
So you see me get the oil seal housing on and centred. The uh, masking tape idea didn't work out particularly well for me, but I suppose I could have. I thought I had figured out how deep was sensible, but it wasn't. Anyway, and I popped a bit of grease on the crankshaft itself and gave that a wipe off. Afterwards, uh, I've just hung on the engine plate and get that bolted in, probably off camera. It's not particularly exciting. And I've popped in the bushing for the input shaft support so I don't forget it. Okay, so I'll get a bit more put together and then come back. Right, so here's my view from under the car. Didn't get a great deal done yesterday, but now the flywheel's on and torqued up, I had to kind of stick a quote bar through the chassis to hold the ring gear. But it's done. So I'm going to give the flywheel a bit of a clean and get the clutch installed. So there, clutch is installed. So now it's going to be onto the uh, awkward bit and getting the actual gearbox in. Right, so gearbox is back attached to the engine. You can actually just go underneath. Yeah, you can see I've got a plank of wood between the the front of the engine, under the block, supported by the block that's also supporting the sump, and that then is resting on the gearbox mounting plate. So that meant I was able to slide the gearbox along that plank in more or less the right position um, and not put any weight onto the input shaft. I've got a couple of bolts, well there's a couple of the studs at the top and then a bolt at the bottom so it's going to stay flat against the engine and I'm going to get it lowered down and get the rear mount done up and the prop shaft flange. So that's everything bolted together. I think next I'm going to get the oil into the gearbox. So when it's when it's been out, when the when the gearbox has been out, and I've had to take the extension off, what I tend to do is fill it through the hole where the extension would sit. Which means I just pour it in the top. Then I'll get that cleaned up, new gasket and get the gear change extension attached then it's going to be a case of connecting the speedo cable and getting the overdrive and reverse lights wired up and then we can check if everything actually works so let's get that done there's the remote on and all the wiring connected up. And I was thinking, oh, I can start to test now. But I forgot something important. We're not going anywhere without the starter motor. So I'll get that on and then, well, test the electrics and, and then start up. Okay, so a quick check of the reverse lights and overdrive. Then we can put the car on the ground and check the actual gearbox function. So, third.
we do have a pair of reverse lights, though. Oh, they do show up on the camera. Right. Put it on the floor. Aside from the, the speeder's not speeder cable's not connected, which I could do, but I, yeah. I just want to see that, that we're working. So let's have a go. Has taken me a few days just to be able to get on to getting all the bits and pieces back together. But now should be good to go for the rest of the summer. Fingers crossed. So that's done for the while. Hopefully I'll be able to get back on the Herald and actually sort out whatever mess I've made of the bulkhead. Um, but until then, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time. <laughs>